So my most viewed video on this channel with a whopping 2.5 million views as of this second is the 10 best Nintendo Switch games worth playing. If you thought I wasn't gonna do another one of those videos, <laughs> you're insane. But honestly, I really love free games. I'm now realizing how dumb it is to say that out loud because who doesn't love free games? I've made two of those videos now, so 20 free games on Switch. And believe it or not, after looking into the eShop the last few days, I found another 10. So 30 free games on Switch worth playing. You can buy a Switch and play at least 30 games that are good without having to pay a penny. That's not a bad deal. <laughs> All right, so you're probably very excited to find out what 10 games you're going to be downloading today without having to pull your wallet out. So let me shut up. I'm just gonna say real quick. I don't want to go down to that comment section and see all the comments being like, Oh, you forgot Warframe. Oh, you forgot Fortnite. I've already talked about those in the other two videos as well as 18 other games. Believe me, after this video today, I've talked about every free game on Switch worth talking about. So if there's one you love, you don't see it today, go watch the other two videos. Oh, and that last video with the two million what whatever, it, it got 56,000 likes. So if this video could get 60,000 likes, which is kind of a Herculean task, and I, I don't know if that'll happen, but I believe in you guys. It'd make me very happy. It'd make me very happy. It'd make me very happy. <laughs> okay, let's just start. <laughs> We're outside. I haven't seen this since February. Yeah, I get it. You watch all of my videos, but the one thing you never get to see? <laughs> my feet. Stylish, huh? I swear it wasn't windy at all until I started recording. Also, they're comfortable, lightweight, breathable, stretchy, and they're even waterproof. I actually haven't... Whoa! Okay, I need to actually get a slow-mo shot of that. See, my phone is fine. Okay, honestly, Vessi is an incredible footwear company. Via their community fund and their pay-what-you-can model, they help members of the community during this time by funding those in the community who are already working on amazing projects. The great news is that their product is not only quality, but the only shoe you will need. Whatever the weather or terrain, a muddy hike, submerged in water, at the gym, or just popping out to the store. I'm even standing in dirt right now. <laughs> I can slip on my Vessies and know that I'm covered for the day no matter what I'm doing. Plus, their shoes are 100% vegan. So, I <laughs> mean... <laughs> no, you can't eat them, but they are vegan. They don't use any animal products, even in like the glues. But yeah, both Kim and I have a pair of these. They're so comfortable, we can barely even tell we're wearing shoes. And right now, they have an amazing $40 off a pair of these little tree climbers. And you can get your pair, I'm out of breath from running, at vessifootwear.com forward slash beat em ups. Cut, my hand hurts. <laughs> Ninjala! Hey, that was pretty good. Ninjala is pretty fun, I think. It has heavy Splatoon vibes. If Splatoon was free to play and it had a battle pass, loot creates another microtransactions, but I'm not complaining. None of that is intrusive on the Ninjala experience, and I just think we're at the point where all of that stuff is the norm and we're just used to it, especially in these free to play games. The gameplay is fast paced and furious and also completely confusing. I've never played a game for this long and felt so good at it. Like I win almost every time and yet I have no idea what I'm doing. In battles, I, I just button mash anything that comes up on the screen and I hope for the best and it seems to work most of the time. It's all about getting points from eliminations or these point balloons. And honestly, I find that other players are too focused on killing each other, so I run around cleaning up all the point balloons for an easy victory. My biggest complaint is that the game gets stale very quickly. It only has one map and one style of playing, not much strategy or variation, so every game feels almost identical. Even when I try and mix it up with different weapons, it all kind of amounts to feeling the same. So even different different levels would really help shake this game up. It's been out a while, we could use one more. Other than that, really fun free game. Uh, I'm not sure when Fantasy Strike punched its way onto the eShop for free, but honestly, I kind of really like this fighter. Visually, it looks pretty nice, and it controls really smooth. It has 12 unique characters, from a magic paintbrush lady to a freaking panda bear. All of it's free. All the characters are free, and I mean free. Not you start with two or three and have to pay for more. No, they're all free. This game is 
It's all free. There's no catch. I don't, I'm still waiting for the catch. An interesting concept in this spider is that the grapple can be countered by just not pressing anything. I mean it. Let go of the controller if someone tries to grapple you and you'll do this like big ultimate <laughs> devastating counter move. I kind of like it. It really helps limit how much opponents try and spam the grapple move. As if you time it wrong, it can really backfire. If I had paid for this game, I may have complained about how it doesn't really bring much new to the genre, but considering it's free, I really don't have a single bad thing to say about it. Uh, other than the fact that A is Y and B is X for some reason. That made the tutorial confusing. This is a solid fun fighter I could boot up and play anytime. The main guy isn't Zelda? Then who's Zelda? Okay, you want to continue talking about free games I had no idea were on Switch, no idea when they got there? Turns out they're really actually pretty fun, even though they look like they shouldn't be. <laughs> this one's called Island Saver, and it surprised the heck out of me. I can't recommend this one enough for any parents out there. Download this game for free and let your kids just run wild. Trust me, you'll see what I mean in a moment. To start, it's legitimately surprisingly fun. You run rampant around an island with a blaster that can suck in trash, water, coins, and more. You use it to clean up the pollution around the island, and as you do, it brings the world back to life both with flora and fauna. Creatures called bankamals will spawn as you clean up the environment. When you find them, they'll be drained of all color, but then as you restore the island and feed them, they'll grow fat with coins. Like, you know, one of them old piggy banks you'd smash open and get all your pennies out of, except you don't, you don't harm them, you just get the coins out, restore color to them, and then you have these cute little freaking creatures running around. You can even add them into your Pokédex style index, which has a nice collect them all addictiveness about it. It became pretty clear to me as I was playing that the game was all about teaching young minds the ins and outs of environmental care, the fundamentals of saving up money and having a working bank account, even down to using your own pin number at the ATMs. And don't steal my pin number now that you know mine. I only have like 20 coins left, please don't take them. Even down to the concept of paying taxes. Every 10 coins you collect, a tax robot will appear and take one away. That's a tad too realistic, if you ask me, <laughs> but it's done in a very cute way. What I love is that the game does a fantastic job at being educational, but in a very fun way. It doesn't cram any of these concepts down your throat. Rather, those concepts actually add to the experience, and at the core of all of it, it's just a cute little game about saving animals. And look at these red pandas, they're so cute! Red panda is legitimately my favorite animal, I'm not kidding. Whenever I go to a zoo and I discover they have red pandas, spend like an hour trying to find them in the trees, they get, they hide up there, you never see them. If you haven't seen a red panda, you think that's cute in the game, mm. Google red, red panda right now, pause the video and come back. See? <laughs> How cute! <laughs> mm, 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 mm. Filming at 2 a.m. doesn't matter if I film middle of the day, 2 a.m. Texas. It's but hot, like 100 degrees outside in the middle of the night. How does that make sense? How do you people live here? I don't get it. I don't get you people. And I'm from Australia. Rogue! Company! <laughs> Y'all may know I recently made a video playing Rogue Company with a bunch of my friends. And we had a really great time. And while that video was sponsored, I'm saying that right now non-sponsored. I legitimately really love this game. So rather than just playing it in a video, I wanted to also do an actual solid review. <laughs> hey buddy, you wanna come here? Aw, oh, but you miss me. Hi Rez. Okay, he runs away immediately when I do that. There he goes, he doesn't like it. hi -res, the publisher of this title, has already done a load of amazing work on the Switch, bringing games like Paladins, Realm Royale, and Smite to the platform. They just have this console figured out. All their games play smooth and are visually impressive. Rogue Company, at a clean, crisp 60 FPS, is no different. It's a 4v4 third-person shooter that plays like a mix between Counter-Strike and games kind of, sort of, like Overwatch. It currently has 12 characters with more to come, each with their own passive and active abilities. For example, Lance's passive has her auto reload when she dodge rolls, which is crazy OP in my opinion, and her active gives her a huge speed boost. You have healers, defenders, attackers, and more to mix up your offensive or defensive strats. There are two game modes currently, Demolition, which is my favorite game mode. Each round you have one life and it's your task to wipe out the other team or set or defuse the bomb. 
I don't know why I did that. These matches get super intense and have a load of strategy behind them. Or you can just play Strikeout, which is a Team Lives mode, and wail away with guns and abilities. In between rounds, you use the cash you earn to level up your loadout, and it's just so smooth and fun to play. I sank a ton of hours into this one already, and uh, knowing me and my addictive personality, I'm sure there'll be a lot more hours to come. Hey buddy, how you going? Good, how are you? I'm good. So, I'm filming a video and sometimes like in between the games I review, I like to have these little skits, but I can't think of anything funny to say or do, so can you please say something funny? Yeah, what's funny is you filming a video at 3.22 in the morning, you whack job. <laughs> That'll do, thank you! <laughs> Bye. Pokemon Cafe Mix, sorry, is an undeniably adorable game. It's cuteness overload, and while playing it, I can't help but smile as I think back to my time at the actual Pokemon Cafe this game is based on. Yes, if you didn't know, the actual Pokemon Cafe in Japan has Pokemon-themed food created by Chef Pikachu. And when I was there, I got to meet him, and I even shook his hand, so buh. Sucks to be you. But uh, the Pokemon Cafe game is, it's okay. It's very Candy Crush inspired, but due to the fact that you can push, slide, and move all the Pokemon faces around the screen makes the early levels super easy. That said, as you progress past levels like 60, 70, yeah, it becomes stupidly hard. Added with the games like this free to play nature of only having so many lives before you either have to pay for more or wait real life hours before you can play again, those later levels can become way more frustrating than any sense of fun. But Overall, this one is pretty light on its paywall restrictions, with the casual player probably never really even running into any issues at all. I'd say the game is better suited to a younger crowd, as I didn't find it super engaging, but hey, certainly cute. And you can still collect Pokemon and they wear little chef outfits and they have like different abilities and they're so cute. <laughs> I'm losing so many macho points today. First red pandas, now the cute Pokemon. Let's move on to something less cute and more <laughs> aggressive and hardcore. <laughs> Elder Scrolls Blades. <laughs> With a fantastic port like Skyrim on the Switch, why would anyone want to play a watered down mobile version of the game? <laughs> because it's free. In Elder Scrolls Blades, you have a home village and it's your job to rebuild it back to its former medieval glory. This aspect of the game is honestly pretty fun. You can upgrade things like the stores with your gold to get access to more upgrades. And how do you get gold, you may be asking, if it wasn't apparent to anyone already? By going on missions and dungeon crawls. There's no world exploration in Blades like there would be in Skyrim. Just accepting missions and loading into dungeons, but that's fine and it works within in this concept. While you're out there and you hit a battle, you get locked into a 1v1 hack and slasher battle mode. You can attack by using ZL and ZR, you can also guard and use special attacks using other buttons. It's all about placing your hits from high to low and breaking defenses and that kind of thing. On mobile, you used your finger and you did the big uh, swipes instead. It was kind of more accurate, but I also kind of prefer having actual controls, especially since we're on a console now. Weirdly, they removed motion controls, even though the Switch could do it. Okay. Interestingly, there's also an online 1v1 player versus player battle mode, so... It's free. Visually, it's very similar to Skyrim on Switch, but like a bit worse. And many people have claimed there's a huge paywall that you hit at a certain point and you can't progress without dishing out the dosh. Bear that in mind as you play the game. You know how at the top of this video, I talked about how I made two of these videos already and those had 20 games? Well, as it happens, I'm running pretty low on like the good ones to talk about. So let me save you some time and put a bad one on the list. Let's have a look at Tennis, 1920. 20s. It's bad. <laughs> yeah, so it's it's tennis on the Switch, and I actually downloaded it a little excited because I thought maybe, you know, I, well, I assumed I would be using the Joy-Cons to hit the... No, no, there's no, there's none of that. It's just a uh, left uh, stick to move and right stick to knock that. That, that bad boy back. There might be more to this game, but it's so ugly and bland and bad. With confusing menus and, uh, <sighs> disturbingly long necks. All, all their necks are really long. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> Moving on. Uh, well, this one's pretty straightforward. 
jump rope challenge. A strange Nintendo developed and published game. It features a crudely drawn rabbit and has you mimicking a jump rope with the Joy-Cons. That's it. <laughs> That's the whole game. That's okay. I'm not judging. I'm, I'm really not judging. My voice just went really high. <laughs> the game tracks your daily progress as you hit the daily goal of 100 jumps. Or you can increase the limit all the way up to three freaking thousand jumps. I was confused. I was baffled by this. So I looked it up on Wikipedia, the world's most reliable source of information. And the game was apparently developed by a small group to keep active at home during shelter in place orders of the COVID-19 pandemic. That's a little bit of history. Then also, I don't know if anyone else has thought of this, but this technically makes Mr. Bunny here a canon Nintendo character. Jump rope rabbit for Smash? This technically could happen. <laughs> oh, get your war face on. Get a little, nah, get your war face. <laughs> oh, you gotta love when a game on Switch runs at above 30 FPS. And in the case of war face, you get exactly that at a smooth, steady, locked, 40 FPS, but hey, that extra 10 is better than 30, right? <laughs> this game is by far the best online FPS on the system, and the fact that it's free is almost unbelievable. There's online co-op levels, spec up story levels, and a plethora of versus modes. Battle Royale, Bag and Tag, Team Deathmatch, Storm, Blitz, Plant the Bomb, Free for All, and Capture. Also, there are hundreds of unique weapons and a load of different loadouts. Out. But SED is by far the most powerful. You play as a souped up Terminator with a massive machine gun. It's kind of overpowered, but hey, I don't complain when I'm racking up those kills. <laughs> Ugh. Yeah, sure, there's still no Call of Duty on the Switch, and I have no idea why, but this is the next best thing, so go play it. I also played this one on my channel in a full video with both Kevin Kenson and Spawnwave, so go and watch that video if you want to see more of the game. Okay. <sighs> Alright, look. You gotta level with me here, you little nit- Picking nitpickers, you gotta let me have this next one, okay? There is only 52 items listed under free games on the eShop. That leaves like 12 we haven't talked about, and that includes like the Nintendo online service and some oh, just games. Ah, they're bad, even for free. They're bad. So I've talked about all of the games worth mentioning, believe me. Which left me, when I was writing this video, at nine games. And I couldn't have the title nine free- Oh, that messed up my, my OC. I need ten. It's a nice round number. So, uh, Wolfenstein Youngblood, uh, Trial Edition is technically completely free. Yeah, the entire 30 hour adventure shooter is free to play. <coughs> if. <laughs> if someone else you already know has the game already and invites you to play the game with them via Buddy Pass. <coughs> So yeah, you know, you don't need to buy the game to play it. You just need to have a, a friend who already has the game. It's also listed under the free to play section. So assuming you'll let me have this one. Youngblood is a spin-off game to the recent Wolfenstein sequel. And while it can be some fun to play in co-op, I actually don't like this game very much and I finished it. So don't get me wrong. All the fun gameplay the series has become known for is here and in many ways improved, but there is little to no story, world building, or direction in this spin-off title. You get a little itsy bitsy cutscene at the start, then it's 25 to 30 hours of linear backtracking through levels and blowing up bad guys until the end of the game where you hear one more itsy bitsy cutscene and then credits. It's not bad, it's just a game. It's just another game. It's not one you have to play, it's there. And actually, bringing a buddy along via the free pass is the only way I really recommend playing this. I could not imagine struggling through this mess on my own. That said, we covered so many great free games today, but I want to know which was your favorite. Or if you have a favorite free game that wasn't on this list, feel free to leave it down below. I really, really do like making these videos because it's fun and highlighting these free to play games. And then now you guys can spend the rest of the day probably playing a game for free you'd never heard of before because of my video. That's fine. I like that. I like the idea of that. And I hope you guys like these videos as well. Again, please like the video if you did enjoy it 
it if it helped you out. Subscribe if you want more of these videos. Remember to check out today's sponsor as well. The links for that will be down below. <laughs> now with all this filming video crap out of the way, I can go play some more Jump Rope Challenge. Okay, bye. <laughs> what a lame way to end the video. Bye.